Welcome back to Tightwad Workshop. This is my motorcycle. It's a 2006 Husong GT650S and it has a problem. It's a V-twin motorcycle but right now it's only running on one cylinder. I can tell this is the case because it won't rev above 5000 RPM and while the rear exhaust header pipe gets hot when the engine's been running for a while, the front exhaust header stays cold. To fix this problem, first we'll need to remove the seats. Next, I'll remove this bolt and lift up the fuel tank. I need to prop it up with this piece of wood while I disconnect the wires and hoses. Once everything's disconnected, the tank can be lifted off the frame. The tank's almost full of fuel, so it's heavy. Next, I'll undo these four screws and remove the air filter. Now I'll loosen the screw clamp on the rear carburetor. I couldn't reach the screw on the front carburetor clamp with my screwdriver, so I popped the rubber connector boot out of the airbox instead. Once that was done, the airbox lifted right off. That revealed another two drainage tubes on each side that needed to be disconnected first. But after that, the airbox lifted right off. That then gave me enough clearance to loosen the screw on the front carburetor boot. When I reinstall it I'll have the screw facing the other side so I can unscrew it with the airbox still in place. The next step is removing those two throttle cables. As usual this took about 20 minutes. I'll just skip past it so you don't have to listen to so much bad language. Finally I can disconnect the two choke cables, loosen the last two clamps and lift off the carburetors. I'll just untangle that last cable, then I'll see you at the workbench. Actually, I'll just plug up these inlets first. I don't want twigs and leaves from the tree falling in there. I've linked to some other guy's video up here showing how these CV carburetors work. It's very good, you should watch it. I'll start with the front carburetor first, since that's the one with the problem. These screws are stuck tight, so I'll use an impact driver to loosen them. When you hit this tool with a hammer, the screwdriver bit's forced into the screw while it's turning. The screws are easy to remove once they're cracked loose. There's some sludge stuck to the bottom of the fuel bowl. I'll clean that out, but it's unlikely to be the cause of this problem. Normally I'd remove the float and needle valve now, but on this one I'd need to remove the big bracket holding the two carbs together first. The float bowl still has fuel in it, so the blockage is more likely to be in the jets. I'll use a flat screwdriver to remove the main and pilot jets. The main jet looks clean, but that pilot jet looks like it's blocked. The throttle butterflies are also a bit sticky. You can hear a clicking noise as they unstick. I'll empty the float bowl into this container. Now I'll remove the diaphragm and slide assembly. Be careful not to lose that spring when you remove the cap. Also be careful not to tear the diaphragm if it's stuck in place. That black stain on the end of the needle is old fuel residue. It will most likely be the cause of our problem. Next I'll give the carb body a good spray with carburetor cleaner. I'll also use the carburetor cleaner on the slide and needle. That looks much better. 
Now I'll fill the fuel bowl cover with carb cleaner and let it soak while I fetch a nozzle for the spray can. After a few rounds of soaking and wiping, the float bowl cover was clean. Then I used the nozzle to spray through all the passages in the carburetor body. Next I used the spray to clean the jets. The main jet cleaned OK, but the pilot jet was blocked. I plucked a bristle from this wire brush, then used it to clean the pilot jet. Once the blockage was cleared, I could blow carburetor cleaner through the jet. Then I reassembled the carburetor in the reverse order. Finally, I cleaned the second carburetor in the same way. After the usual skin knuckles and dropping things, I was ready for a test run. These carburetors have no fuel in them right now, and the fuel only flows while the engine is cranking, so it might take a while to start. That's still only running on one cylinder. There's the second cylinder starting now. Much better. Better try that again to be sure. Now I'll move the bike around to the front of the house. I've attached my faux pro camera to the bike using this primitive mount. So let's saddle up and take a test ride. For the test ride, we're going to visit one of my favourite riding locations, Brindabella Road. I hadn't been out on a motorcycle for two years, so I started off very gently. I was expecting low quality video from the faux pro, and that's exactly what it delivered. By the time I reached the 100km an hour zone, I'd found my groove again. Feel free to skip ahead, this is just going to be another 60 seconds of an old guy riding at the speed limit. After about an hour of riding my motorcycle round corners, I came home and started making this video. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Tightwad Workshop is filmed in front of a live studio audience.